Good morning IED and welcome to the train project. In this project we're going to be assembling a train. In this video I'm going to be giving you some hints on how to put this train together but pretty much we're reading different types of views and we're matching them part for part. So let's go ahead and start with the easiest part, the linkage arm. This arm links up the wheels and it's a fairly straightforward part if you take a look at it. Hopefully you have this sheet in front of you as well. Uh, so when you look at this part, notice immediately that it's three and a half inches and that's like a rectangle. Then on that rectangle we have two circles. We have this smaller circle over here, which has a diameter of 0.128, as well as a larger circle. Except that because it's not a complete circle, it's going to be represented in radius. So it's R, um, 0.1875. However, in Inventor, you have to double it. So if I was drawing that out, let me draw it out, I would have that rectangle, that would be 3.5, and then on this uh, middle center point over here, I'd have the smaller circle, then I'd have the larger circle, and then I would trim out, once I've dimensioned those, everything I don't need and I'd essentially create that shape that I'm looking for. So if you look over here you'll notice the center lines that's indicating that that's at the center and that center line also leads up to this extension line which leads to this dimension line which is 3.5 and then you're going to extrude it out 0.125 and also make sure it's 0.25 thick the rectangle and 0.125 over here um, and then you've made this part. So go ahead, save it into a train folder, and let's move to the next one. Number three, which is pretty easy. Um, it's just two circles, a smaller circle and a larger circle extruded. So if I was making that part, let me just, you know, it would be like a small circle and a large circle. And um, dimension these two, it gives you the dimensions and then extrude out the center. So that would be part three. Next let's take a look at part four. Uh, they give you a bunch of dimensions here and even if you think they're missing something they gave it all to you. Um, these are in diameter and this is SR which stands for spherical radius. So the radius of this if it was like a globe is 0 0.208 all around it. Okay, now a very important thing. Whenever you're given a sectional view, such as this one over here because they're using section lines, whenever you're given a sectional view, it means that you want to build this part using the sectional views. So it's essentially like the easiest way to make the part. Don't try to like extrude out a rod and then extrude out like a half semicircle and revolve it. Instead, draw this part out an inventor and then dimension everything accordingly. This top part's probably going to be the trickiest, but you know, if I'll, I'll demo this one, you know, I'm going to draw out, whoops, of course I can't draw out in a straight line. Okay. I would draw out that sectional view first, and it looks like, oh, there's one more line. I would dimension everything and then after I've dimensioned everything I would put an arc for the top and I would dimension that. And I believe this is the SR number so it should be 0 .208 but if it looks weird try doubling it. But I believe it will be that. So you're going to dimension that, you're going to dimension the other things as well because they give you the dimensions please be reminded that if you're only doing this section view you're only doing half of the part so if you're only doing half the part these numbers are halved so that would be 0.125 for this distance once you've dimensioned the entire part finish the sketch and use the revolve tool to click on that and then the axes I apologize <laughs> 
my monitor is a little uh, iffy, to click on that end line. If you didn't see that, let me do it one more time. That's selected, and then for the axes, you would select this line and it would revolve it around that line. So that's how you could do that part. Of course, save that part once you're done. Um, the same is going to apply for this part, the linkage peg. They give you the diameter, they give you the spherical radius, and you can figure out the rest. Okay, uh, next, let's take a look at number six, the peg axle. This part's a little different from the other ones, um, and I'll break it down into several parts. One, there's a thread on it, um, and it gives you some information about the thread. The other is that it has this on it, and if you don't know what this is, it's referring to a chamfer of a specific type. So we have to put that on, as well as a diameter, a spherical radius, and it even has a hexagon. That's 5 30 seconds and 0.111 cut into the part, and another circle of that diameter. So if I was starting off that part, what I'd do first is I would make a circle and the circle is going to be, what's it say, 0.25 because over here it's 1 fourth, or not the offset, but 1 fourth which means the thread's going around a fourth so this whole thing would be 0.25 um, inches for a diameter. Um, I'd finish that, I would extrude it out and uh, you're gonna extrude it out one inch over here, the one that's representing the length of this part. So one inch, I believe that's correct. Um, and then you'd start a sketch on the top ring and we're going to draw out, let's see, a circle of 0.422 diameter. And then we're going to extrude out that circle uh, point one two five. Okay, so let's extrude it. I'm going to extrude it 0.125 and we're going to have a part like that. Okay, sorry, I was just thinking about the part. I'm not sure if that was, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, um, and then we need to put, it looks, and this is debatable and it won't really affect it either way, that this is more of a chamfer than a fillet. So a chamfer is located underneath the fillet tool called chamfer and we need to put a chamfer on this edge here and we're going to put a chamfer that's the difference between 0.125 and 0.031. So and if we do that we'll create this chamfer over here. So let's do that. 0.125 minus 0.031. Hit OK and you're going to take a look at that and that looks pretty close to the image so I'm feeling good about that. Okay let's go ahead and start a sketch over at the center. We need to draw out a hexagon that's in the center of the part so let's head over to our polygon tool which is where they put it? Oh right over here polygon tool and we need to make sure it's six-sided so there should be a six over here and then we're going to draw it out from the center of the part 
like that. And then let's go ahead and dimension this polygon. So you're going to notice right away that polygons can dimension weirdly. So click on one side and then click on another side. If you remember this is the F value in that equation. And we're going to set this to be 532nd according to the image. It can't be, oops. 532nd and since we did that on the center you know it's on the center we don't have to make it any better than that and I'm gonna go ahead finish the sketch I'm gonna cut that into the part a 0.111 according to the image and then hit OK to create that top part um, on the bottom it looks like there's a chamfer on there of 45 degrees times 0.03 uh, if you don't know what that means, that's fine. That's just referring to um, like a curved measurement type. So what we have to do is open up your chamfer options, and I believe it's the second one, or is it the third one? It might be the third one. Go over to the third one and just write that in. So 40, um, this is going to be 0.03. And this is going to be, oh no, wait, that's this, oh, it's definitely this one then. So let me click on that, that, and then you'll see that it's made that chamfer. I'm going to hit OK. And we made that over there. OK, and last but not least, we need to throw in the thread. So let's head over to the thread tool which is now located underneath hole. So click over hole. There's an option here called thread. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to thread our part. I need to set it up. If I hover over the part you're going to notice that it would fully thread the whole thing. But according to the image it's not quite fully threaded. It doesn't really tell us where but I'm going to assume that's about 0.25. So let's turn off full length. Let's put an offset of a quarter inch. and then let's hover over our part. As you can see, that's what it's giving me. I'll click on the part, I'll hit apply, and I'll be done. So, this is looking pretty close to the image. Go ahead, save that, and move on. Okay, and that's gonna conclude this video. In the next video, I will show the rest of the parts.